So Abimelech came to the tower and fought against it and approached the entrance of the tower to burn it with fire. But a certain woman threw an upper millstone on Abimelech's head, crushing his skull. Now, this might not sound like a big deal, but a few times here in the book of Judges, but a millstone was basically what they used to grind uh, wheat with. It was a kitchen appliance. It was like a kitchen aid that fell on the Wimbledon's head. What's the moral of the story? Get rid of your kitchen aid. <laughs> Not serious, but basically that's what a millstone was. And by the way, this was a certain woman to be killed by
the goes around comes around. It's quite interesting that Abimelech kills his brothers, says it was a stone, and this woman basically subdues him with a millstone. So he says to his armor bearer, draw your sword and kill me so that it will be said, will not be said of me, a woman slew him. So the young man pierced him through, and he died. When the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, each departed to his home. Thus, get this, God repaid the wickedness of Abimelech, which he had done to his father in killing his seventy brothers. We read that again. Thus, God repaid the wickedness of Abimelech. There is a time when vengeance will be exercised by God. In the meantime, if you are in opposition to God, I suggest you repent. Or you will face the consequences. Verse 56, Thus God repeated the wickedness of Abimelech, which he had done to his father in killing his seventy brothers. Also God returned all the wickedness of the men of Shechem on their heads. They are the ones who called, called Abimelech to be the king, and God judged them also, says he. He returned the wickedness of the men of Shechem on their heads, and the curse of Jotham, the son of Zerubbabel, Jerubbabel, came upon them. Back in verse 20, when he gives his parable, Jotham gives his parable, he says, listen, you know, my dad, in verse 17, he says, for well, my father fought for you and risked his life, speaking of his father, Gideon, and he delivered you from the hand of Gideon. But you have risen against my father's house today and have killed his sons, 70 men on one stone, and have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant, king over them of Shechem, because he is your relative. If then you have dealt in truth and integrity with Jerubbabel and his house this day, Rejoice in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. And then he tells him exactly what's going to happen to Abimelech. And as you can see, the prophecy was exactly true. Let me read the rest of Psalm 37, just to give you a context. This is important for us to know because, you know, evil seems to be prevailing in our land. And it's easy for us to get distracted. It's easy for us to lose heart because it seems like evil is winning. But I want you to know this morning that God is still on the throne. He's still in charge. Don't fret because of evildoers. Be not envious toward wrongdoers, for they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green earth. Instead of focusing on what they're doing and seeming that what God is not doing, trust in the Lord.
he was no more. I sought for him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless man and behold the upright. For the man of peace will have prosperity, but transgressors will be altogether destroyed. The prosperity of the wicked will be cut off, but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked. 